Hvert år er der 9.000 danskere, der forsvinder. Mere end halvdelen bliver fundet inden for en måned. Seks bliver aldrig fundet. Hvordan er det at være far til Pia Magnus, der bare forsvinder? <tryk> per Magnus Tengestal var 33 år, da han en mandag morgen i 1987 traf sit livs beslutning. Uden at drøfte med nogen og uden noget varsel, forsvandt han fra sit hjem i Oslo i Norge. Så kom jeg hjem fra jobb på ettermiddagen, og der lå det bare en lapp på, på stuebordet. Uh, Hej, jeg blev borte nogle dage, og så stod det også under, jeg ringer, har han også skrevet under. Ikke let. Det har været svært. Per Magnus blev som søn i en berømt norsk lægefamilie presset til at tage en uddannelse i medicin. Men han ville hellere have været pianist. Det var det en plate som det da var en stor, nok så mange forskjellige varianter av det tema. Og den platen forsvant. Og det synes jeg var lite rart. Per Magnus karakter i gymnasiet var ikke god nok til en lægeuddannelse i Norge. Hans far betalte derfor et studie i Irland i Dublin på Royal College of Surgeons. Her studerede Per Magnus i seks år. Klaveret blev droppet til fordel for et hårdt liv. Som kulminerede, da tre af hans venner døde i en bilulykke, mens han selv overlevede på bagsædet. Han levde, jo, levde vel ut sin frustration over å, måtte, øh, over å måtte studere, samtidig som det var en, en konflikt mellom hans lojalitet til faren og logikken og det presse som lå på han rundt, rundt det å skulle ha en skikkelig utdannelse og, og det han øh, ville ofre sig for musikken. Og samtidig som det også med musikken var, blev jo et dilemma for han med at øh, han ikke øh, kunne, øh, han øh, syntes ikke selv han kunne satse på å, å bli verdens pianist. Og det var jo specielt med han da, at hvis han ikke da kunne bli i verdenstopp, så, ville han, så var det liksom ikke noe vits i. Jeg bebreder mig jo ingenting. Han, øh, han øh, var jo 
er nu hier begabt wird. Herzlich willkommen. Och hade många talenter. Och det är alltid vanskligt när man har för många talenter. Han kunde ju ensätta allt egentligen. När det gällt eh, detta med att studera medicin så var ju det i för sig inte någon unaturlig ting för en så begåvad elev. Och ja, för det där är ofta flinke elever som börjar på sin studium för det är långt och krävande. Hans morfar var ju läge, hans mor var läge, jag var läge, hans syster var läge. Så det var ju inte i för sig någon unaturligt att han satsade på det som ett yrke. men det som men pressade i ham till den läge. Jag gjorde nog det. Jag gjorde nog det. Det låg nog alltid innebyggt uh, hos mig att jag rätte med att han skulle bli läge han som som mor och som far och som inge och som bestefar. Jag ville inte tro att han hade begått självmord eller sånt. Det, det, det ville jag inte tro då för han hade väldigt lust till att jag lust till att uppleva ting och lust att göra ting och och hade egentligen det men han hade problem med att vara här då i den som sa kedliga lite kedliga vardagen här hemma. Men så hvis men hvis han har utsatt varit utsatt för en olycka så självförklarligt men det jag tänker är att hvis han hade det så hade han väl blivit funnet. Han øh, har inte eh øh, giltig pass nu. Vad nå det utlöper? Kan du si det? Det vet vi inte helt för øh, det som de säger i Sarpsborg att de uppbevarar detta här alfabetisk in till ett år efter att pass är utlöpt. Efter ett år så blir det lagt i bunker. Nå lovte hun i Sarpsborg å titte over disse bunkene på te for Tengestad. Og det skal de gjøre. Men uh, ut fra det hun kunne finne ut, så hadde han ikke gyldig pass. De sier på passkontoret at det kan være at de utlandet er noe slitthente. Det er mulig at det er hun passkontoret som ringer. Spanning. Ja, vad har hänt? Du fann kort hans. 15 i 793. Den datorn det gick ut då. Det var grejt. Tack för det. Ja. Okej. Okay. 15 i 793. Utkort. Du du får det ju till att lysa som om Per Magnus blev presset hårt av sin föräldrar och som om vi står overfor et ungt menneske, som øh, nærmest flygter fra dem. Ja, ja, jeg tror det er, er en ganske rimelig forklaring. Og ikke bare foreldre, men jeg prøvde jo også å spørre, spørre Kari litt om, og, om det var noen grund til at den skulle flykte fra henne. Og jeg synes at jeg så det samme mønsteret, øh, nemlig at, at de gikk in og tog ansvar for hans liv. På en, på en måte som, som antagelig må ha vært utholdelig for han. Samtidig som ja, han hadde en syke som gjorde at det var kanskje lett for, for først foreldre og så Kari å, å, å gå in og, og, og bestemme over han, som gjorde at det var et behov for han å, å kaste loss fra absolutt alt. Fordi at han var ikke, var ikke klar for å leve en sånn normal hjemme til værelse her, altså han hadde lyst til å gjøre noe annet, og det ga han uttrykk for også. Han finner på noe reise, reise et annet sted, fin, ja, finne på noe. Det skal, det skal jo være en, der siger, at det er slut. Var det dig eller var det ham? Ja, det, det, det fikk ingen sagt. Hvis han er i live, da blir kanskje saken egentlig enda vanskeligere, for er han i live, så, så vil han jo ikke bli funnet ut. Ellers hadde han gitt lyd fra sig for lenge siden. Og da spørste om han har klart å skaffe seg en, en ny identitet på et nytt sted som vi kanskje ikke kjenner til. Kanskje det er hverken i Karibien eller i Nordamerika. Så en sånn sak, det har ikke noe erfaring med det. Jeg tror det er veldig vanskelig å, å gi et svar på det. Altså. P. Magnus var alltid eh, vanskelig å forutse. Han var veldig impulsiv og gjorde ting. Det var veldig lav terskel for, 
for, for t- t- ting han kunne gjøre som andre ville tenkt seg veldig, veldig nøye om før de gjorde. Vi har jo en, en, en million amerikanske dollars med til ham, som han har arvet. Det er han ikke klar over. Hvad tror du, han siger, hvis vi finder ham og giver ham den million? <laughs> jeg tror Pio Magnus var aldrig opptatt av penger eller status. Aldrig. Han var mer opptatt av å ha det han ønsket der og da. En flaske martini og 40 rottmann cigaretter og reise et eller sted og spille golf. Noe utover det tror jeg ikke han hadde noe særlig behov. Han trivdes ikke som lege etter at han, sånn som jeg hadde fått vite det da, hadde opplevd at en depressiv patient hadde hoppet ut fra tredje etasje. Sånn som Kari fortalte meg den gang, så hadde vi inntrykk av at det, det gjorde veldig dypt inntrykk på ham, og det var jo tre dager etterpå han forsvant oss. Det fremgår av sagsmappen at avskedsbrevet skulle ligge i jeres papirer, men... Men det blev väck. Kan du förklara vad det har skrivit? Jag kommer inte att förklara något särskilt om det, men jag ser ju av sammanmeddelandet att detta brev är levererat till politiet när sammanmeddelandet blev ingitt i 1987. Och hur det har tagit vägen i löp av de senaste åtta åren, det kan jag dessvärre inte svara på. Vem tror du han måske har talat med och fortalt vad han vill? Alltså jag 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 vill jätte Paddy då. Jag jag trodde han och Paddy hade eller de hade till synlapp ett år att föra att han våren var mer sån over, mer sånn feste. Ja, men Paddy ved jo ikke noe. Ne, nei, men jeg ville trodd det i utgangspunktet, men eh, også Brian og Brian, for han snakket jo med han fra tid til annen i, i telefonen, da. Brian og Brian. Ja. Hva er grunnen til at Per Marmus Tengsdal ikke blir efterlyst over Interpol i 1987, da han forsvinner? Det virker for mig nå som om det er en ren glipp fra politiets side, at han ikke ble etterlyst via Interpol, for det gikk jo frem allerede i samlutmeldingen at det var et pengeuttak på Jamaica. Og da er det jo nærliggende å etterlyse ham over hele verden gjennom Interpol. Men det er, så langt jeg kan se papirene, altså ikke gjort. Det siste livstegn fra Per Magnus er denne kopi av et banknota fra Jamaica. Den 19. november, tre dage efter sin forsvinden, hævede han på sit visakort 5.000 US-dollars. Hans mormor er død. Hans mor er død, siden han forsvandt. Og du vil faktisk kunne fortælle, om han har arvet en masse penge, ikke? Jo. Altså, han har arvet efter sin mor, ikke? Da hun er død. Så har Inger, hans søster og Per, de har arvet halvdelen af hver af morens arv, ikke? Og det er der med 5 millioner til Per.
Politiet på Jamaica kan ikke hjælpe os. Meget tyder på, at svaret skal findes tilbage i Dublin. Per Magnus studiekammerater kom fra hele verden. En af dem, No Williams, kom fra Jamaica. No, if he came here, Jamaica is a small place. And if he had worked here as a doctor, he would have he would have been seen. You would you would notice him, you see? He could have worked here as a doctor, but I don't think he did. I don't think he ever came here. But what about the piano player, Pierre Magnus? I that too would um he couldn't hide. He wouldn't hide. Jamaica is too small. If he were here playing a piano, I mean working as a pianist, you would you would he would have been noticed. Yeah, five thousand US dollars. And we know too that he, he brought his passport, his medical papers, and another five thousand US dollars in cash money. Mm -hmm. So we know he came here and on the 19th of November 87 in Citibank, which we don't know yet which bank, he withdraw this money. Danish experts tell us today that it is his signature. They say too that uh, it seems to be a happy man who knows what he wants to do. So the plan was to find him on his first day, give him one million US dollars, right? <laughs> <laughs> and celebrate a bit. <laughs> Do you think on this... And very strong. Yeah. On this document here, I don't see any indication of Jamaica. I don't know if you can point still to me here. It says here, City okay. Bank, Jamaica. Okay. But which, which department? We I don't know. Jamaica. We have to... NY. Yeah, and what's that? New York. New York. They have a Jamaica New in New York. Jamaica in Queens, New York. Have you heard of it before? Yes, that's it. Are you kidding? Yes, yes there is. Yes, you, there is kidding? a Jamaica in Jamaica, New York. New York. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Yes, in Queens. No, we are no. serious. We are Please serious. Help me. Jamaica, New York. Not, not. We would write Jamaica, West, West Indies. Indies. No, it says Jamaica, no, New no, York. No, please, please, uh, please, be, <laughs> say, be careful, right? Sure. Everybody, every, I, I, nev I never asked well, about it because... Oh, Citibank 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 no, but every authority, police and everybody has said no, we as a there. fact that it was Jamaica. And then no, maybe they made, no, so I never no. thought about it. You say this, this is... This says Jamaica, New York. We would write Jamaica, West yeah, Indies. Yeah, I wonder, the, the, the NI, I or thought, well... Some people write Jamaica, WI. Or Jamaica, West oh, Indies. Come on, it's an American bank. Yes, yes we have a branch we here. Have a branch here. There's a branch yeah, here yeah. in New Kingston. But, yeah, that's why but we thought it was here. Yeah, yes. Citibank, Jamaica. This, this is New York. It seems to be. Seems to be. The question is whether this is the bank here in Jamaica or in New York. New York, this is New York. It, for sure? Yeah, this is Jamaica, New York. For sure. Gotta be, yeah. Can, can you, what about the numbers and all that? What can you tell no, us no, about? This, 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 this won't mean anything, but the address is clearly Jamaica, New York. So it's not here? No, it's not in Jamaica. It's not Jamaica, it's not Jamaica West Indies. It's Jamaica, New York. It's Jamaica, New York. <laughs> <laughs> På fem timer finder Interpol ud af, at Per Magnus ankom til J.F. Kennedy Lufthavn i Jamaica, New York den 18. november 1987. På det kort, man udfylder ved indrejse, skriver Per Magnus, at han vil bo på Omni Hotel på Manhattan. Did he stay here? No, 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 no. I would, yeah. would you be able to check it? Not, not tonight. Why not? Because I don't have that... Uh, you don't keep the list? It's not on our... Uh, it's on, it would be on hotel desk. All right? I, so I, if you're I, filming I, me, do me a favor, please. Stop. Stop filming, all right? Okay? Now. Per Magnus selv 
har oplyst, at han tog fra JF Kennedy Lufthavnen til Omni Hotel på Manhattan. USA har aldrig registreret Per Magnus som udrejst. Så nu var vi på den. Over internettet sender vi billeder ud af Per Magnus. Til venstre vores bud på, hvordan han kunne se ud i dag. Samtidig vender vi tilbage til Irland. Vi tror, at svaret på gåden kan ligge blandt hans studiekammerater. Vi ved, at Per Magnus besøgte en af sine nærmeste venner, Imon Keen fra Canada i 1983. I guess everything got out of control, but like when I came back in the morning, my house was completely, I didn't own the house, I rented it, but the house was completely destroyed. <laughs> And I don't mean like just some minor damage, I mean like it was a shell. All the furniture had been thrown out of the house into the river, it wasn't worth anything anyway, but it had been thrown into the, the, the waterfall that came down beside the house like 20, 30 feet down into a waterfall. All the windows had been broken, the doors had all been kicked out, walls. Are you kidding? I'm serious. Vi kunne ikke få bekræftet, at Per Magnus overnattede på Omni Hotel Manhattan. Men vi ved, at han næste dag hævede 5.000 dollars i Citibanks afdeling i JF Kennedy Lufthavnen. Den 19. november 1987 hæver Per Magnus penge i lufthavnen. Det må betyde, at han er rejst videre. Vi fandt Patrick Wheeler, en af vennerne fra Irland i Philadelphia i USA. Uh, I called Lars maybe three or four times after that, and you know he had no, no news for me. And I, um, when he told me about this thing in Jamaica, I rang my friend Nor Williams, who was from Jamaica, and I asked him to see. He was working in Philadelphia at the time. In fact, I asked him if he could get onto his brothers down there and see what they could do. So Peter. that was a, 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 you know, a dead trail. And I called a few of his friends in Canada, Eamon Keane and those, and told them what you know the situation was. And uh, yeah. but you know, I, nothing. We, there was you no... know, we're going to visit Eamon Keane this oh, night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were good friends. Yeah. yeah, he sounds very nice. Well, really, there was you know, it was just a, a, a dead trail. Like, there was nothing. Was... So I didn't act- actively look for him. I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't know where to begin looking for him. Yeah. Um, so of course you don't know where he is. No. I'd like to. Um, we were good friends and. Uh, You know, I, I don't know. I know he was he was depressed that time. So he was. He's yeah, he was very depressed then. Men uh, også Brian og Brian. For jeg snakket jo med ham fra tid til annen i, i telefonen, da. Brian og Brian. Ja. twice. I mean, he came back a second time uh, uh, to visit me, and, uh, you know, he seemed in good spirits uh, at that point. But, uh, you know, I, I'd need to kind of uh, just kind of go over everything in my mind and try and think of what, uh, you know, the when was the last time I saw him and so on. I mean, and... Uh, I mean, I, I, I think that's uh, very hard to do for somebody that's uh, as complex as uh, Per Magnus was and as brilliant. I mean, he wasn't uh, an ordinary man. I mean, he was extraordinary. 
and uh, he was good looking, very attractive. Uh, I remember walking down <laughs> down Grafton Street, which is a kind of a, the fanciest uh, fashion street in Dublin, and seeing all these beautiful models walking up the street, <laughs> peering and uh, gazing lovingly at uh, Per Magnus. Uh, so I mean, he had everything uh, that you could possibly want. Uh, I mean, he had he, uh, money, he had good looks, he had intelligence. He loved life. He uh, people liked him naturally. Uh, whatever he did, he did to the very best. Uh, I mean, he was just a tremendous individual uh, all the way around, and uh, and I think he was a good friend to his friends. I mean, uh, but were you more than a friend to him? I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose, you, as I explained before, you meet some people in your life that uh, you feel a natural empathy with, and uh, you know, he was like a brother to me, and uh, you know, and I feel uh, <clears throat> because I knew that uh, he could be unstable and he could be wild that uh, he could get himself into trouble, too. And, uh, you know, ill could be befall him. And uh, I, as I said, I think, before, I feel a little guilty sitting here uh, seven, eight years after he disappeared and only finding out now that he was a missing person. And I, I kind of feel mad at the same time. And why didn't anybody tell me about this seven or eight years ago. That's, you know, so, uh, you know, if he's out there and he wants to be found, I'd, uh, I want him to, you know, let me know he's there. You know, I, I hope he sees your show and, uh, you know, if he doesn't want to talk to anybody else, talk to me. Well, I mean, like that's, you, you would have to, Per Magnus, where if he's alive today, he is not operating as Per Magnus Tengestel, Norwegian citizen or, you know, graduate of an Irish medical school, because that would be very, very difficult, obviously. If he's assumed uh, another name, I mean, goodness knows, but, I mean, Per Magnus is not somebody you would forget. Like, I mean, the guy was, what, six foot six, six foot seven? You know, you, you, you tend, like, these people tend not to get lost too easily. Somebody, I think, would have picked up on it. If, if he was practicing medicine in any community today, it would be something that would be very difficult not to pick up on. Can you imagine who could be that friend or girlfriend that he told, he talked to, that he was going for, come arriving in New York? Mm -hmm. could you, do you have any knowledge of not any person? I really don't know, to be quite honest with you. I have no idea. None. You know? Der er ingen tvivl om, at vi med Eamon Keane og Brian O'Brien har fundet de nærmeste venner. Men hvordan kan det være, at Brian O'Brien ikke kan huske, om P. Magnus har krydset Atlanten og besøgt ham en eller to gange? Den første gang gik ikke stille af sig. I don't know who destroyed the house, or, you know, I mean, destroyed is a pretty uh, oh, come on, strong you told, word. You told me on telephone that he did it. In Newfoundland, no. Yes, I remember that. Were you at the party? Yes. Well, there's the man himself What right happened? there. What happened? I went to work. <laughs> So he probably is responsible for this. Who did it, Brian O'Brien? He probably did. This was... What happened? <laughs> what happened? We were all there, but all the boys, when they get together, they start to drink heavily. And Anyway, the last thing I remember was they were trying to see who could put their fist through the living room door. And I don't know if it, Eamon was there. And I, and I said to Perry, and I said to the boys, I said, this is completely nuts. I said, what are you doing? This is somebody's house. I didn't know whose house it was. But I think I told Nina, Nina the other day that the door was completely 
reduced to splinters. There was no door. There was no evidence of a door ever having been in the living room. All you could see was little scraps on the floor. That's, that's the problem when you invite riffraff to your house. And <laughs> I, I didn't realize I had, it was I had drywall plasterers <laughs> in there and carpenters for three weeks afterwards. <laughs> but please, who of you is the closest friend? That's just a question of, I mean, like, that, that's, I would say that Promagnus was one of my closest friends. I have a lot of good friends and a lot of very close friends, and I'd say he was one of my closest friends, whether he felt the same way or not. I was one of a large circle of his friends, as I'm sure Brian was as well. I can't say that Brian was, or I was, or Joe Soap was. I mean, everybody has different opinions on stuff like that, but... No, uh, but can you agree that finding and meeting and talking to you two I am very close to the closest friends. I'd say that Brian and myself were among his closest friends, sure. And I would think that if Promagnus was still alive, and I've said this to you before, and it's no secret to Brian either, I couldn't imagine Promagnus being in North America, being in Canada, wherever, and not yeah. making any effort to get in touch with yeah. me or with Brian or uh, among others. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think he took a plane for St. John's and I think he went up to see you in 87. And I think you know something you're not telling me. <laughs> no bones. No bones. I, you know. First, I don't know if there's any flights from New York to uh, here. I don't think there's anything directly. No, you're going down the wrong avenue there. You have to uh, try and uh, find something else. 